Hey guys, it's Pontic, and today I'll be showing you round two of the Decade of Darkness tournament against my opponent, Strategist, from the Bear Clan. So he got first pick, and he chose Egypt, and then I counterpicked with Armenia. So yeah, you can see I have a four Eastern Cataphracts with a Royal Cataphract General, four Eastern Archers, four Caudalai Axemen with one Axeman, and then two Persian Hoplites for support. My opponent has four Citizen Cav with a Ptolemaic Cavalry General, four Slingers, two Glacian Royal Guard, which are Beachley units, one Egyptian Infantry, two Thorax Swordsmen, and then five Thurial Spears. Yeah, alright. So here we are in Pyramids, which you can see back there. And yeah, really, my goal was to hold with my infantry. You know, pretty basic. And then I had my cataphracts on each wing, one on each wing spread pretty thin in hopes that I'd be able to catch whatever cavalry he had. And with them pinning, I could then send these cataphracts around with my general just to hammer in the backside. So yeah, you'll see we'll start moving forward. My opponent has his citizen cavalry stationed on his wings and then he has his Egyptian infantry in the front. Mainly, probably just guessing, soak up fire from slingers and archers, and then to absorb charges. So he has these Thurios, which can throw their javelins while this guy is being chewed apart. And you notice he brings two Glacian guards, royal guards, really amazing units. He has one station on each flank, and behind them, he actually put Thurio spears, which is a great unit for support and all kinds of things with cavalry fights, infantry engagements. So yeah. I'm moving up relatively fast, but in a second, I'll kind of get, I don't know, I'm kind of hesitant to engage because his infantry, he has, what, I believe five, yeah, five infantry on his front line, and I have five myself, and then my two Persian hoplites to support, but with five infantry, I can obviously, you know, pin these guys down, and then I have Persian hoplites, which would go against royal guards, but they also have Thurio spears supporting, so, you know, my flanks would fall apart relatively quickly and I'd have to move really fast with my cataphracts so excuse me uh, so I was kind of cautious about that not really wanting to engage so I thought things through completely so you know I'm kind of just sitting here thinking about my plan of plan of action in a second he'll move forward and I'll actually start falling back quite a bit because I could you know take this engagement with my eastern archers against his slingers and I would think my archers should win. 150 range. Yeah, they have the same range. My guys do more damage, but they have 20 armor compared to 10, I believe, on these guys. Yeah, I have 10 armor. So they have double the armor, but I do 15 more damage. So, yeah, I, I wasn't sure about that. I would think archers would win, but I, I didn't want to just engage, and I was going to save my archers for another engagement. So, you can see I fall back with my guys. He's going to continuously move forward in a second. And, yeah. Not much happens until later on, but there's some rearranging with his cavalry and things of that nature. And these, these royal guards are what I was most worried about. These guys can be quite deadly. For the most part, I would think my Cotterly Axemen could beat. I'm. Well, yeah, Thoric Swordsman. Let me check. Yeah. I would think Cotterly Axemen would be able to beat everything on his in infantry line by themselves if it was just a one on one fight. But yeah, so. I'm kind of just hanging back. We are talking in the chat, so it's not just like we were just, you know, sitting here doing nothing, but. At this point is when I want to go ahead and sh charge forward. Because I figured, you know, I could just go ahead and send my Persian Hoplites into his Royal Guards. And, uh, cap uh, pin his cavalry with one cataphract. And then I got three cataphracts, including my general, I can bring around to the back. And I figured that will be enough, hopefully. Now, my cavalry is faster, and they do get up here a lot faster. And, uh, he actually is going to start firing onto them. Which is good on his part, because HP damage. I mean, not going to do a lot, but better than nothing. And in a second, I'll move my cavalry back, because that was kind of stupid of me, but most of my other guys are getting up here, and you can notice right here now, 
All of my archers I have set to fire onto his general. I just completely ignore everything else. He does go ahead and send his Egyptian infantry up, which I have attack orders on everything else, and it is going to kind of get messed up when he tries to use this Egyptian infantry to attack my guys. So yeah, moving up around here, I'm going to bring my cataphracts up. These guys, you can tell, I'm splitting off one over here and then two over here. Bring this guy, trying to pin those guys, and then this one's going to pin those two units. You can tell already, not a lot of losses yet, but my archer's going to start actually picking apart his general. Really good, actually, getting quite a few kills. You can see all that archer fire now. But yeah, down to... <laughs> down to half strength 31 guys already so lost quite a bit and I finally able to engage you can see his glacier world guards taking in some of my units and my cavalry does engage his over here and over here I'm able to actually get both of his citizen cap stopped which my eastern cataphract will win that but he has his thurio spear which is the only thing that kind of worries me so I'm going to bring these guys around real quickly and you can see I got this eastern cataphract I'm going to bring around this one's tied up with this Citizen Cav, which is no problem at all. And I got my Persian Hoplites. Carl uh, this is just my normal Axeman. I refocus my infantry fire to take on his Glacian World Guard. Because I try to get some flank shots. That's something I really need to worry about. You can see he's already chewed through that unit. I finally get this Cataphract in the back. And these two are finally coming. Get some quick charges into here. And bring this guy back. And I got this one cataphract, losing the fight but holding up both his cavalry and his Thurio spears. So my infantry doing okay for the most part. He is able to get some cavalry into the back, but citizen cav shouldn't be that big of a deal. See, I'm firing, getting trying to get as many kills as I can on these royal guards who are now at the back of my Persian hoplites. My cataphracts went over here, and I'm gonna bring them in the back in a second. And now I got my cataphracts in his back line, so there's not going to be much you can do. So I'm going to just be basically just demolishing everything back here. Get a quick charge into here. Bring these guys, get a charges into here. Got this cataphract unit. My general I'm going to actually be bringing into here in a second. See my eastern cataphract tanking it out, but now facing the Thurl Spears, he's not going to be able to win. And I kind of actually forget about this guy. I was just distracted with my other cavalry and things. He's able to get assistant cav to take out most of my archers. But that's not a big deal now because everything else that's going on around here, it's not a big deal at all. So I, I just ignored that unit. You can see I get a nice charge into his Glacian Royal Guard with my Cataphracts. See, get a couple kills there. Now it's starting to chop a lot faster. Quick charge in here, pull out. Quick charge in here, pull out. And that's basically what my strategy is. Charge here, pull out. I just finish the charge back in there and I pull my General back out. See, it does charge into my uh, Axemen over here, but Citizen Cav, I mean, 25 charge bonus. Nope, that was the wrong thing. 28 charge bonus. So not great. Some of my archers come back, so I target them onto his cavalry, try to get that out of the way. As I pull out, get a nice charge into Thurio Spears, which are supporting. He sends a Citizen Cav, so I'll go ahead and attack those, but that's not a big deal. Quickly, you see, I activate Second Wind, so my, guy, my general is no longer tired, and he's going to get a nice charge into the back of those guys, which are Royal Guard. They're going to start wavering, and that's basically going to be, you know, the turning point in the battle for the most part. No longer worried at all. Got these, all my cataphracts still, and a couple of them already have almost 200 kills there, you see. And his flanks have broke apart, so I'm just going to collapse on him. Move my extra infantry over here, and over here into his units. This cataphract, I finally realized, is a cataphract and not, you know, infantry. So I bring in some Persian Hoplites against the Thurial Spears. I'm actually going to pull these guys out. And, yeah, I'm just going to continue with the chargers here and here. So, you know, the charge against these swordsmen and citizen cavalry. Going to get chewed apart. And I got my archers firing in on to these units over here. Persian Hoplite. Already starting to route. But I'm going to get a charge with my cataphracts here. You can see my general up against these uh, Thurio Spears still. But I'll get a nice charge in from the back. My Persian Hoplites, they kind of rally back, and I'm going to charge them into the back here. This guy is quickly going to get taken care of, so I'll give me three more units, which, you know, I'll sick them on the Thurio Spears. Bring this Cataphract over here, and then this flank finally, finally breaks. See this Royal Guard fighting down to 18 men. 185 kills, man. 
You can see it's in height hunt. <laughs> it's base morale is ridiculous, so it's not gonna break. I'm gonna fight to the last man. You get a charge into the back and yeah, you can see I cleaned up everything over there and then finally his last Galatian Royal Guard breaks. You can see both of them. Incredible amount of kills. 193, 151. You can see his, <laughs> his Ptolemaic Cavalry General. Only one kill. And that was mainly what these archers got. A lot of these kills were from that general. And then most of them were on these Glacian Warrior Guard. Which made these guys definitely worth it. Getting not a lot of kills, but they were quality kills. See these two cataphracts getting over 200. This one losing barely any men, so that's really good on their part. Most of his citizen cavalry didn't do anything. This one unit able to get 146, so that's really good for a citizen cavalry. And you can see most of the rest of his infantry didn't do much, and neither did his slingers. But over here, same infantry not doing too great, some of these units. These three units actually did particularly well. So yeah, good game to strategist. And with that was the end of round one, so... I'll try to post round two whenever that comes around. But yeah, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more videos.